Hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here from The Curious Piano Teachers. Now today I've been rooting around underneath my piano, which lots of things live under there, and I found my big box, I don't know whether you can see it, of tutor books. This is a collection of tutor books uh, that I bought over the ages, and there's more scattered in various places on my shelves and um, in different places because I do have quite a considerable collection of tutor books. And that's because I found them really quite fascinating. And Sharon and I were talking this morning about the way our teaching has changed and been influenced. And I look back and I think that tutor books that I've used have definitely influenced me and I have learnt such a lot from them. So I thought I'd give you a little peek into some of the tutor books I've used in the past. Now, when I first started teaching, which don't tell anybody, but it was kind of almost 40 years ago, I think now, one of the pop books I really like to use, and then remember there weren't that uh, that many books around at the time, was uh, Piano Lessons Book One by Fanny Waterman. And I did use this a lot with secondary aged pupils, and it's a fascinating book to uh, to look at. And when I look at it, I, um, I, I remember that what I learnt from it was teaching artistry right from the very, very start. I think it's a super book, and I learnt a lot of my teaching techniques from this very book. Pedagogically, it doesn't quite stand up these days in, in the way that it follows things. And you know, a lot of teachers would comment here that it goes very fast and especially towards the end, all of a sudden it goes from almost everything being in C major and all of a sudden you're in D minor and you're in all sorts of different keys. But definitely for artistry, it, it is superb. And for me to learn as a teacher, there was so much here. So, for example, there is playing with both hands and it's lovely because it's in contrary motion and you get the same piece twice. And the first time it's called a lullaby and the second time it's called a march. And I can remember teaching this and the, the pupils having to characterise the music. So uh, I'm just going to do it standing up. So that's there. So we, we might play it slowly. Two, three. pupils coming to to grief over that and I probably wasn't quite as experienced as I am now to help them over that and then so that's your your lullaby with that lovely crescendo and then for the march smartly forte full of really really super ideas for me to learn as a teacher how I can in incorporate artistry right from the very start. However when I changed my jobs I moved house I moved uh, into schools where I was brought a young pupil a transfer pupil who brought along a book called Alfred Alfred's basic piano library and oh my goodness me, this was such a revelation to me at the time. And I think it was really very new still in, in uh, just being published in the UK. Now, I'm not sure this is the original book that I saw, but it's something like it. And all of a sudden, my eyes were opened to this idea of patterns and shapes and playing off stave. Now, this is obviously something we're used to these days, but it wasn't something that we did in the UK, as far as I'm aware. And I certainly didn't know about it as a young teacher. And it obviously was a very American thing. And this was the first American book, I believe, to be published over here. So patterns and shapes. And I can remember being totally blown away by the uh, offstave work at the very beginning, which, you know, OK, it's got the letter names written in, but it's, it's, it's there for a purpose or it's got finger numbers. It was there to teach the patterns and shapes. And then the very first piece, and I love this fact that it did the bass clef first or the F clef as it's called, and it would do rain, rain, go away. And I can remember listening to pupils and they just read it, you know, just first thing. The, you just show it to them and they would continue to read those pa those patterns because they already had them in their fingers and that was oh my goodness me that really works that pattern and shape playing and of course all these things as a teacher you take and you think oh that was really interesting and you take into yourself and you think about it a little bit more maybe go and do some more research 
So Alfred was definitely a, a big influence on me. I'm not saying these are the only tutor books I've ever used, because they're not, but these are the ones who I think had the most profound impact. And then, um, I think a few years after the Alfred, I came across Piano Adventures, which I know is a, still a very popular, as is the Alfred, a very popular book here. And again, it's another American one. And by this time, I think I was beginning to research into the American pedagogical background and noticing that they'd done a lot more uh, rigorous work on pedagogy on how children learn and making sure that every all the steps were necessarily in place and I can remember in this with Piano Adventures um, being really impressed by the technical aspect of it how that was all built in but also being aware for the first time of landmark notes and how that really helped with the reading by giving these landmark notes as opposed to the mnemonics that are used in this book yeah so this this still uses every green bus drives fast and that's what i was doing back a long time ago um so by the time i got to piano adventures yes there was much more sense of the technical side of things and also the landmarks so for example one of the first uh, pieces that is on the stave on the stave is called driving in the G clef so here we've got this reinforcement of the idea of the G clef and why it's called a G clef and things and then we have got both both the C tre middle C and treble G playing together now if you're aware of uh, things you'll know that when you put the, the thumb and the set the fifth finger together it gives a lovely strong bridge so uh, we're helping our pupils to develop that lovely hand position with the strong bridge off i go and whole arm movement you know just super and that to me was a really really lovely uh, lovely book to discover with some really funky um accompaniments so it's it up turning my hands around but you get the idea so piano adventures really was uh, a book i used for quite a long time and the whole series of piano adventures when i said the whole series no i'd pick and choose like we all do we all use certain books as our as our kind of foundation and then we add to them don't we all the way around it so by the time i was well into using piano adventures i was also well in, into thinking about tutor books and thinking about how children learn and doing a PhD and creating some guiding principles. And then, of course, with the Curious Piano Teachers, um, well, before the Curious Piano Teachers as, as my PhD, one of the things I, I started to do and completed was to put together a piano framework. So no longer was I just choosing or following through a tutor book and creating a bit of a curriculum from that. Instead, I had a framework for the first time that I could follow a progress through, see what was missing, see what I needed to do, etc. So the piano framework was pretty instrumental in helping me to really um, create my own journey for every single pupil and really make it a bespoke thing. And then with the Curious Piano Teachers and Sharon and I have worked at what we call the guiding principles together. And you might notice that the Piano Teachers course that I'm also involved in also had guiding principles. And for both of both organisations, at the heart of it is this idea of making music. Making music should be the central point of all the lessons. Alongside things like the, the, the pupil um, having an equal share, they, they, they need to learn to explore the music, taking ownership. And this idea of making music, of pupils being able to play music as well as read music, well, that all just happened before, I suppose, I then became aware of a new publication called Piano Safari. And for me, Piano Safari um, at the moment is what I primarily use, not only, but I do. And that's because it brings together the artistry that I found in the Fanny Waterman with the technique that I found in the Piano Adventures, alongside the note reading that we were finding and the pattern, the shape reading that I was finding in the two American books. And it also brings in an additional item, which is the making music. So our students are able to make music and 
they can do it as well as reading the music. So all those three things really integrate, I think. I had a young, a young chap having a, a lesson a few weeks ago who's on book two, for example, of Piano Safari. And uh, he had taught himself from a video I'd sent how to play Shadows at Dusk. recognize it and he played it first lesson off yeah so expressively and he said that's a very relaxing piece Sally yeah and he was feeling quite stressed as, as a lot of children have been feeling very stressed at the time so what have I learned from tutor books I've learned so much but you do have to stop and you have to kind of make notes as you go through and you have to think about it and reflect on them and what you are learning from those tutor books as a teacher is invaluable especially if you're an inexperienced teacher or a younger teacher you can learn so much about piano tutor books even the ones you don't really really get on with and there's quite a few in my little pile here that actually i look at and think oh i like that idea but i'm not so sure about that idea people often ask me sally are you going to write a tutor book and the answer is no <laughs> no i'm not um because I think there's enough, and I think there's enough of real quality out there. I mean, Piano Adventures, clearly. Get Set Piano is another really good one if you're, if you're UK-based, along with Piano Safari. And, of course, there are new tutor books coming out all the time. So my book, the, the Ready to Play book that, that got published this time last year, this is a musicianship book, if you like, a musicianship tutor book. But it's not a book to learn the piano through. Okay, It's about engaging the ear. So, my little journey through tutor books through the times, go away and have a little think about what tutor books you have used and what you've learnt from them, because it is quite fascinating. But make sure that when, at the end of the day, you have some core principles of how and why you teach the piano and what it is. Make sure that your tutor books that you use embody those principles. Okay, that's what I would say. So hope that's been interesting. Lovely to see lots and lots of people listening today. So clearly it has been of interest to you. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for staying with me. I'm just going to say I'm not going to be back in next week because I'm going to have two or three weeks off probably over the Easter break. So no Tuesday teaching tips for a while. I will be popping along, though, on Monday next week because Monday, in case you know, didn't know, is World Piano Day. So look out for me popping up on a Facebook Live at some point on Monday, the 29th of March. If you can't make it then, then do take care and I will see you after Easter. Happy teaching. Bye bye.